I'm Dr. Sreem, I'm a board certified family medicine and sports medicine doctor. In this video, I'm going to discuss how I treat grade 1 and grade 2 M cell injury in my active population. Without further ado, let's get started. Now, let us first understand the anatomy. So, I've got a knee model here. So, we've got the thigh bone, which is the femur. Then, we've got the shin bone, which is the tibia. So this is the inside of the knee and this is the medial collateral ligament. So the medial collateral ligament provides stability to the inside of the knee. So basically it prevents a valgus stress. So basically a valgus. So it tries to prevent the opening of the inside of the knee joint. So in order to further understand valgus stress, basically means that let's say you're jumping on one leg. Your knee may want to collapse inwards. The medial collateral ligament provides stability thereby preventing that from happening. It is important to be aware that providing stability for the inside of the knee isn't just a job for the medial collateral ligaments. Muscles such as the hip abductors, they are vital in keeping the knee from collapsing inwards. The pes anterior muscles, which is basically the part of the hamstring groove, also contributes significantly to prevent the knee from collapsing inwards. So why does the MCL injury happen though? You know, it always amazes me, like when I'm covering a football game or a soccer game, I see athletes may take a huge hit or push and the knee might collapse inwards, but then they start walking again without any pain. So you may ask like why does the MCL injury does not happen during the scenarios? And the reason for that is because the muscles are being activated at the right time and thereby the stress does not land onto the ligaments and the muscles and everything they absorb the force. But let's say you're being distracted. So let's say you're focusing to hit the ball and suddenly the other athlete comes and then he drives the, his leg to the outside of the knee and thereby the, before the muscles get activated the, the ligament, the, the joint opens and thereby stresses the ligaments and thereby causing the MCL injury. But I have good news for you. The MCL injury, they have a good blood supply, which means that they can heal well without any surgical intervention. Even a complete grade 3 MCL injury, although I'm not going to cover that in this video because it's a little bit more complicated because there might be other accompanying injuries. However, like grade 1, grade 2 MCL sprain, without any other knee injuries, they heal really well without any surgical intervention. So now let us understand what is the grade one, grade two, and grade three MCL sprain and how I diagnose that in my office. So the patient will walk in my office and the mechanisms of injury are usually getting hit from the outside of the knee and thereby they have pain on the inside of the knee. Uh, so when they walk in the office, they are limping. Sometimes they may not be limping. The patients have pain on the inside of the knee. So basically when I palpate the structures around here, they have pain. But let us say that the patient has pain on the outside of the knee, and let's say the, the knee is swollen, then I'm worried about a lateral meniscus injury. So basically the meniscus here, because what could have happened is that when it opened this knee here, it could have caused a little bit of torsion on this region, causing the lateral meniscus injury, which may need a further evaluation with an MRI. So then I carefully assist to see if the patient's anterior crucial ligament is intact or not. So then I start to grade the ligament injury. So the grade one is basically when I stress the ligament, so uh, they have pain, but then the joint doesn't open. But let us say if I stress the ligament, if the joint opens, but if it doesn't open completely, then we call this as a grade two MCN spring. But let us say if I stress the ligament and if the joint completely opens without any end point, so basically there's no, there's, there's no feeling of something stopping there, then there's a grade three MCN injury. However, an isolated, just a pure grade three MCN injury is sometimes rare. There are usually other accompanying knee injuries, which is why I'm not discussing that in this video because it needs a proper evaluation by a sports medicine trained surgeon in order to make sure whether this patient will uh, heal without a surgical intervention or not. So the treatment is simple. So basically we just let the ligaments scar down a little bit. And after that, we'll start to focus on motion and then we'll focus on strengthening. Then we'll progress to sports specific exercises and then basically get back into sport. So usually grade one MCL sprain, like one to two weeks, sometimes even up to four weeks, grade two MCL sprain can actually vary. It sometimes can take up to like four weeks and sometimes even like two months in some patients. So I've got great news for you. I've got a step-by-step -step guide with exercises on how to get injured MCLs, basically the grade one and grade two MCL injury all the way back to normal. I'm going to link the video in the description box below and I'm also going to link the video at the end of this video. 
So I'll just talk briefly about treatment for the grade one and grade two MCL sprain, especially the immobilization and how I get the athlete back to normal. Don't worry about the exercises. Again, as I mentioned, the exercises have all been covered in a separate video and you have access to that too. So uh, when it comes to grade one MCL sprain, I usually put them on a hinge knee brace. So if you look at Amazon, a hinge knee brace is going to cost anywhere between like $30 to all the way up to $60 or so. So I put them on a hinge knee brace then I, start, then I give them crutches maybe for a couple of days or so, but let's say they're able to walk without much pain, then no need for crutches. I'll start them to start, I, I'll tell them to start weight bearing, start to focus on range of motion exercises. When they're ready, they can start with like close chain exercises, basically kind of squats, and they can progress with like single uh, single leg uh, lunges, they can pr uh, progress with single leg squats, and, they, and then they can get all the way back to the sport. So for grade two MCL sprain, so let us say if the patient does not have a lot of pain, then I just treat them as a grade one MCL sprain. But let us say the patient has a lot of pain, then I usually put the patients on a T-ROM brace. So basically it's a hinge type of a support brace, but you can actually lock it. So you can, so I would lock the knee brace in extension, let the ligament scar down for uh, one week. So I'll keep the brace locked in extension for one week. And after that, I'll focus on range of motion and strength exercises, which has been covered in the rehabilitation video. But let us say if this person uh, does not have enough money because the T-ROM brace can run anywhere between $80 to $120 in Amazon. If they don't have enough money, then I would give them a hinge knee brace, provide them crutches, uh, don't bait bear for one week, and after that, they can start doing the same knee strengthening and the knee uh, range of motion exercises. The, obviously the T-ROM brace approach is probably going to be far more comfortable for the patient because you're locking the knee in extension so there's less uh, movement that is going on in the knee compared to a hinge knee brace. But again, when you opt for the hinge knee brace approach, still you're not doing any harm here. It's just basically more for comfort level. But let's say if you're wearing a hinge knee brace, then just keep the knee locked in extension with your crutches so that the ligament can scar down. So the most important part here is to make sure that you do the necessary rehabilitation to get the MCL sprain better as well as get the other supporting muscles stronger, thereby the MCL injury doesn't happen. But let's say if an athlete is important to make sure that you do the sports specific training also. So to begin, once you finish the rehabilitation program, then I would tell my athletes to start between slow running and faster sprinting intervals. So for example, you might start with one minute of slow running followed by 20 seconds of sprinting and as you start to develop confidence in the activity, then you can continue to increase the speed. I usually don't recommend my athletes to start with jogging because they can accentuate the strain on the ligaments because you're having a full knee extension uh, while jogging. So that's why I feel like four foot running, so basically kind of running is a better initial option than traditional jogging for many of my athletes. To help with loading the single leg stability further, you can incorporate like Bulgarian squats, single leg lunges, jump squats, lateral jumps, these are all good exercises to incorporate into a sports training program. Finally, wearing a brace can provide comfort and aid in confidence building. However, once you have the sufficient confidence, then I do not recommend that you have to use the braces uh, uh, all the time. So remember, as we talked about, rehabilitation is key to getting your MCL injury all the way back to normal. So I'm going to link the uh, rehabilitation exercises here. If you find this video really helpful, I would ask you a small favor, please make sure that you hit the like button and if you have any questions or concerns, please post in the comment box below. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. Until then, goodbye.